Hey everyone, today we'll be covering how to texture gloves and boots in Substance Painter. We will go over how to use the core tools and techniques to create an efficient workflow to add surface details to our models. We will use layers, filters, procedurals, generators, and more to achieve the stylized look for our characters. So with that, let's get started. Alright, so let's just get right into it. So here we are, we have our folder and everything set up for gloves. So I'm going to begin by just creating a fill layer. So I'll go ahead and drop that into my gloves and we'll just call this material base. Okay. Now in this material, um, I'm going to go ahead and increase the roughness. So it's not as shiny, uh, maybe, you know, right on just under halfway. So it picks up some highlights and I then want to go ahead and change the color. So I'll go ahead now and I'm going for just kind of this light brown material here. Give it a bit of saturation, a bit of darkness here. And I think this is, this is pretty good. Okay. So then what I want to do is go ahead now and create a layer to break up this surface. Okay. So typically you don't want to just go with a clean full material like this. And the way to do that is just to go ahead and create a fill layer and I'll just call it, you know, surface imperfections. And from there, I will go ahead and only give this color. So I'll alt click color. So it just selects that and roughness. Okay. And so this is going to help break up the surface that we have here. Now, in order to do that, I want to go ahead and apply a procedural material to, or excuse me, a procedural texture to the base color and the roughness. All right. So if you're using 2020.2, you can just kind of go down here. We can see that we have all sorts of textures and effects and whatnot, but I'll just go here to base color. And what I want to look for is grunge. Okay, and you can see that there's all sorts of grunges that I can look up. That's just going to help break up the surface here. Okay, so I'll do maybe grunge zero zero, and there's a lot that you can choose from. Um, we can maybe take a look at doing maybe grunge like nine for starters, and we can use that here on both the base color and the roughness. Okay, so if I find nine again. There we go. Now, the thing to keep in mind here is that these are procedural materials that we can tile and increase the, the scale. So I'm going to go ahead and set the scale to five. Now, you will also see that there's a bit of a seam here. In order to get rid of this seam, we can go ahead and just simply change projection from UV projection to triplanar. And triplanar will go ahead and kind of do a really good job and essentially blend between the seams, right? So I brought this up as we were unwrapping and preparing our characters. You don't really have to worry about seams all that much anymore. Okay. And obviously this is uh, not exactly what we want. So we want to change what's called the blending mode. Okay. So if I go to blending mode and I do what's called an overlay, Okay, so I go down to here, you can see that there's overlay, and we can see now we kind of have this really black, stark look here, okay? And what I can also do is drop the opacity a bit, okay? So this is going to help give us, again, that surface breakup, that surface detail, but you can also see we're starting to have a problem here, is that it is kind of ignoring the roughness of the base layer, okay? So what we need to do in this base layer here is we're currently working in base color. So we need to switch the channel to roughness, okay? And once we do that, you can see that we can now change that everything changes to kind of the roughness mode here. And then I can change this blending mode from normal to overlay. And then I can go ahead and drop the opacity here a bit. So now you can start to see that the that glossiness that was happening here, that was really hard and really shiny is essentially dropping, right? Lowering with this opacity and this overlay mode. 
Okay, so that looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and bump, jump back to base color here. And what I want to do is, you know, we can also experiment with different grunges. Um, and I typically like when using grunges, you can use a filter. Okay, so I'm gonna right click on our layer here and then I'm gonna go ahead and add filter. And once I add filter, I wanna do use what's called a sharpen, okay? So sharpen is just gonna give us, as you can see, that really kind of nice, nice grungy look here in our surface there, all right? So that's looking pretty good um, there. And I can go ahead and you can see if I increase and decrease what that kind of, what that's doing, essentially the opposite of blur, right? Which makes complete sense, it's called sharpen. So we can kind of play with that there, all right? Now what I wanna do is, you know, we can go ahead now, if we wanted to, and change the base color here, right? So I have kind of some reference material on the side. I'll go ahead, and this is kind of where I landed with the uh, material here, or the material color. So it was a bit too yellow for my taste. So, but the nice thing is, we can change that color whenever we want with this layering system, okay? So, so far so good. Uh, I like the direction that I have with the surface imperfections. That's just kind of breaking up this detail. And again, you can control that with opacity. And we have overlay here, which is just overlaying that. And then of course, if we wanted to, we can also change the grunge to anything else that we want, right? So I pick nine here. I can maybe go ahead and choose eight. Eight's looking pretty good. And you wanna make sure to change that on both your maps here where I can go ahead and set eight for both, okay? So that's a really good way to uh, change that in a non-destructive workflow. So we'll go on to the next step. So what I wanna do is add some kind of, you know, nice dark variation to this, and I'll go ahead and create a new layer. So I'm gonna create another fill layer, and I'll just call this, you know, dark surface. And from here, we'll go ahead and add a black mask. Okay, so now that we have this black mask, we can now, within this mask, go ahead and add a fill layer. Okay, so make sure to do that on this mask and not on the, the, the base layer here. Now, what we can do is we can use the maps that were baked with this character. Remember in the previous tutorial, we went through here in texture settings. I can go ahead and actually bring this up a bit. And we did a bake uh, mesh maps here, okay? So in order to find that, you can go to the menu over here or the window panel over here and you can see that I have algorithmic and then project. So I'm just gonna collapse algorithmic so I don't have to scroll too much. Find project, right? And then here's our curvature maps and all the maps that were baked. So curvature, ambient occlusion, map material IDs, normal maps, everything. So what I wanna do is essentially, you know, use a curvature map to darken areas in the crevices and lighten areas that will typically be maybe hit by the sun, right? So I can go ahead now and find my curvature map for my gloves. This is it right here for my gloves and boots. It says curvature map from mesh gloves boots. Great. And I can drag and drop that here. Now, what we need to make sure that we do is for this dark surface, we also need to change the multiply mode. So I wanna go ahead from normal now and change this to multiply. There we go. So if I went ahead and do that, do that, you can see what this layer, what effect this is having. Now, keep in mind, we definitely need to make sure we disable these channels here, okay? Because the main channels that I want on this is basically just color and roughness. So color, I'll click that, and then roughness. And then the roughness, I'll go ahead and really kind of crank that up. It's gonna be towards one here, okay? So it's gonna be a nice effect that kind of goes over the entire glove. So now that we have this mask here with fill, right? What we can do is we can use another filter. So I'll right click and actually it's not a filter, it's a levels adjustment. So I'll go ahead and add levels. And what we can do is bring this these top numbers, right, the minimum, and kind of bring these over together where it's just kind of focusing on the 
the curves here and the levels here and take a look at what's happening, okay? So what I'm doing essentially is increasing the contrast, okay? So it's darkening our darks, lightening our light colors, and we can see this on and off. Again, a nice subtle effect, but you can see now in the crevices, it's starting to really give us that nice variation here. And this is all based off of our curvature map that we have down here. Okay, so again, kind of toggling that on and off, you see that you have some nice color variation. Okay, the next thing I want to do is kind of the opposite of what I did for surface imperfections. I want to go ahead now and add another filter. And this time, instead of sharpen, just type in blur. Okay, so I have blur. And I'll go ahead and add that. And I'm just going to go ahead and give this just a little bit of a blur here just to kind of help break up this lighting effect. Now this is a lighting effect and it's not affecting the surface imperfections. So you can see what it's doing here, the lightness. So before it was just a little bit too noticeable or too, uh, you know, the transition between dark and light. So having that blur in there really softens that up, okay? So we can kind of play with that and that'll work. And then one other thing that I can do to kind of help break up this darker surface here that we have like this, all right? One thing I can do is add a uh, another fill layer. So if I go ahead now, uh, sorry, not a fill layer, add a fill under the mask, okay? And then this is where I wanna add in another texture, a procedural texture. And what I wanna type in is just clouds, okay? Instead of using another grunge, and I can maybe just take a look at the different types of clouds that they have here. But I'm gonna use something maybe like clouds one, or even maybe clouds too. You know, you can kind of play with the different different effects. And once you do that, just make sure again, right, you start to see maybe in some areas that there are noticeable seams, right? Well, in order to avoid that, just make sure to set projection to triplanar, okay? There, and so we get a nice breakup in variation. Okay, so it makes it look like it's more worn and more looks more natural instead of just defining and being right on our uh, curves map there. Okay, so that's looking really good. We can go continue to move along and we can add now a color variation. All right, so I'm going to add a new fill layer. And here I'll just call this color variation. And what I'm going to do now, we're going to use a new generator, okay? And if I go here, I first need to give this fill layer uh, an actual color, okay? So the color I want, I already kind of have predefined here. I'll just go ahead and kind of select that. And this is the color that uh, I landed with. So it's a little bit more on the red side, um, more, you know, away from the yellow and light brown. And this is going to help, again, give us some variation. So if I go ahead now and add a black mask, all right? And what I want to do now is select, right click on the mask, the black mask, and then add generator, okay? Here is where I'm going to want to add some different generators. Now you can experiment. Um, I mean, there's already a curves generator Right? And so you, you can see that this kind of gives you a cool effect here where you know you can change the effects and the contrast and the balance and you know essentially tone it down a bit where it's not nearly as intense um, and then messing with the multiplier and, and whatnot. So you can see just by doing that it gives you some pretty good results here. All right. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually instead of using curves or dirt, I'm just going to use the mask editor okay which is this one right here so go ahead and add a mask editor and from here i can go ahead now you can see it's again a bit more subtle there i can start modifying these properties so and just like the i mean curves generator right it's the same same types of uh, effects that we can modify here so i can go down a curvature here because that's what's really giving driving this effect here and i can reduce the fine detail so you can see that's kind of starting to dial back the intensity there and also lower let me bring this up just a bit and also lower soft and you can kind of experiment and play with these settings to get something that you know looks uh 
ideal or whatever you're trying to achieve. It's very creative at this point. And so I can also drop the curvature opacity. So you can see what that's also doing, right? So again, if I toggle off this layer, take a look at what's happening, right? So based off the curvature, we're getting this hue that's essentially just blending and uh, being masked into the base layer. And Again, we can always go here to this color variation and just maybe tone that down just a bit, right? So we have control, a couple layers of control here, which is nice, okay? So, so far so good. We're getting this nice stylized look for leather and we have surface imperfection, surface breakup. And then the last thing I wanna do is kind of add just this nice subtle uh, dirt layer, which is gonna kind of fill in the cavities, all right? Now, instead of using, so actually first let me go ahead and create a layer, a fill layer, and I'll just call this dirt cavity, okay? Okay, so here we have this, and what I'm gonna do is just add a fill layer, I'm not gonna use a mask for this one, and what I'm gonna do is go ahead and only ap apply or modify the color channel. So you see you have color here, and what I want to do is go back to my project, as you can imagine, instead of using curvature, instead I'm going to use ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion is essentially a dirt map. So there you go, you can see that it's starting to get really dirty in the crevices, which is exactly what we want. And then what I want to do is change the normal blending mode to multiply. Okay, so you can see, great, it's starting to darken. Now it's a bit intense right now, so we're definitely gonna modify that a bit. And you can also see, I can change from just normal fill here. I can use maybe something a bit more subtle. There we go, linear dodge, right? So linear dodge definitely does a good job uh, here. Um, keep in mind, we do have to go back and take a look at the, the glossiness, but let me finish up this effect here. So we have linear dodge and probably we can also again, just kind of globally tone that down a bit uh, if we want, okay? And again, you can kind of see how that's adding a nice uh, effect there. And I forgot to disable the roughness channel in this original fill layer. So I can go ahead and just hit color and then you can see we're good. It doesn't give us any roughness uh, information here. Okay, so again, here we are with a little bit of that um, dirt coming in. And if we wanted to, again, non-destructive, it's very modular and procedural. I can go ahead, maybe if I'm like, you know what, it's a little bit too flat, I can maybe give this a little bit less roughness here, go to surface imperfections, kind of, uh, you know, take a look at modifying these settings as well. Same thing with like the dark surface, if that was a little bit too much, you can start to bring back some of those highlights. So we get something like that. But again, it's really great to experiment with this. And if I wanted to change the color entirely, you know, you absolutely have that ability to to do so right maybe if i wanted more of a red leather i have that okay so this is definitely hopefully shows you a, a, a good way of combining how to use all the different layers procedural maps textures to create something that looks very unique and it's not just a simple oh let me grab you know leather or grab a smart material or something like that and drag it over here as you can see under fabric you know i can grab whichever one that i want here and then you just drag it over and just say okay i'm done and move on right so this should hopefully give you the confidence to be able to kind of build more unique and complex um, material uh, networks and layers and of course by the end of it i can go ahead now and take all of these and I can just call this leather, maybe just, you know, for character here. And I'm gonna to wanna to put this in this folder here and I can duplicate this or I can also create a smart material. So if I like this node here, I like everything that I set up, I wanna make sure to go ahead and create smart material, okay? So it goes ahead and creates a smart material and it creates it, if I scroll down here, down to, you wanna make sure to be in shelf 
and go to smart materials and there it is leather character so it's just based off of this name so i can take that and put that on boots now in this case it actually works really well because they're based off the same uvs but if i were to use that anywhere else i would have to make sure to change the curvature maps here okay so just keep that in mind for you know surface imperfections and or anywhere I'm, I'm using the curvature maps like in the dark surface you'd want to swap those out okay but again uh, everything kind of works together so hopefully if you've enjoyed this um maybe give me a comment down below on a anything else i may have missed for this fundamentals uh, walkthrough but uh, like and subscribe is always appreciated and thanks for watching take care guys